Um, kia ora everybody. Um, so I'm Carl Kane. Uh, I lecture at um, Mass University School of Design where I was educated um, in the Bachelor of Design degree after doing a Bachelor of Arts degree. Um, this is Tim Parkin. Hi there, I'm a senior lecturer also at uh, Massey School of Design. So we feel we're a bit um, in the deep end uh, as designers talking to librarians and curators and digital pioneers about their area of expertise. So um, bear, bear with us, um, it's a little bit of a nervous, nervous space for us to be in. Um, but what we want to do is reflect on three years of a, um, a, an investigation which we did with our senior design students, those 300 level design students, into the library of the future. Um, so the, the paper which we are reflecting on is a brand experience or experience design paper. Uh, so we've heard a lot in the last couple of days about design thinking and transmedia. Uh, this is the, the paper where at Mass University we, we've taught for the last decade um, these ideas um, in, in, a, in a very uh, evolving um, way. So the paper is 300 level, it's cross-disciplinary, so we have uh, industrial designers, spatial designers, fashion designers, fine artists, digital uh, designers interactivity designers all coming together in this paper to, to, to look in a contextual studio mode, so theory mixed with studio practice, uh, to, to, to create um, holistic sort of global experiences from a user's point of view. So a lot of the threads which we've, we've looked at over the last couple of days. And within the School of Design, this is one of the first uh, real cross-disciplinary uh, papers that we did, and it was really exciting bringing together people from fashion with visual communication and industrial, and you brought brought together some really different creative approaches, some different uh, viewpoints and specialisms, and we think it's, it's kind of resulted in some really innovative uh, solutions. So this is the, the lens which we're looking through this, or, or, or which we, the framework which we gave the students to uh, explore this, is the theory of experience design. And for those of you who have been in those uh, earlier talks, um, it's very much a uh, holistic, user-centred approach to design. Uh, so we, we look at um, sensors, we look at space, we look at um, time as, as, as media. Um, so it's quite um, empowering for the students, they'll often come in as graphic designers or spatial designers and thinking from a particular medium or mode of working and all of a sudden they're um, charged with, with, with designing um, in, in, in modes and ways which, um, which, which they uh, far well and beyond what they expected to be doing. They might be designing with time or human resources where they thought they'd be designing with ink or pixels. So um, what is experience design? This is a bit of an abbreviated version. Um, Heath Sandler gave a really good description about, uh, I think, uh, user experience and especially uh, the role that uh, user-centred design plays. But, but bear with us for people who didn't catch Heath's uh, presentation yesterday. But I think central to experience design is this fact that it's, it's user-centred. So rather than approaching the design problem with a we know best attitude and thinking about dictating the experience that we know you should have, what it does, it uses different techniques and methods to really gain empathy with the audience. And we'll talk about some of those techniques and methods later on. And I suppose through this empathy, what we do is we uh, try and gain really real insights into the user needs from their from their perspectives. Um, but involving the user in the process doesn't just, uh, doesn't end there, it continues all the way through the process. So what we'll do is we'll start with these initial insights, uh, we'll create some initial solutions quite quickly, we'll then start to engage in user testing. And as you can see here, it's, it really is kind of doing things really quickly, just mocking it up um, to give people an indication of, uh, of what we, the direction we think we should be taking things. Then you walk the user through this, uh, through this initial solution, uh, you document their feedback and their response, and then you iterate. And through the design process, you just continue doing this until you get to the, the solution that best, uh, best meets the user's needs. So it's a little bit of a, 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 the death of the hero designer and more of a, a designer as a facilitator or, 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 or something close to an ethnographer. So what we, what we, we design for is what people do, and a lot, that's what we've traditionally designed for, but also how they think and how they feel. Mm. Um, so we, we, we look for pleasure points or pain points in a user's experience and their journey. And we look to enhance the good and, and, yeah. and um, eliminate the bad. And, oh, sorry, I think this is kind of really interesting, just not just focusing on the doing, but also the thinking and feeling. In actual fact, often it's this emotive response which becomes the essence of the problem and the real driver behind the solution and, and the focus behind the solution. So say, for example, if um, through the act of doing, a user becomes maybe feeling a little bit confused or intimidated, then the way you start approaching the problem 
isn't focusing on what they're doing, it's maybe thinking more of considering about how you can perhaps guide them or connect them or even just make them feel welcome. And, and this adds a real kind of richness uh, to the solution. So th this is kind of what a, what a, a, a sketchbook looks like or in the, during, the, during that iterative process. And this is a, a journey map. So this is um, students considering opportunities to improve the user experience by identifying different touch points throughout their journey. So it's a time basis, it's sort of a human, human journey through something. And it can be through something quite you know, esoteric, from, from, from confused to, um, to, to un I, I'm, I'm confused to I'm understand, to I'm intimidated, to I'm calm. So if you think about like a, a, a reluctant user of a library uh, entering, the, entering the, the journey of the quest for knowledge, that, that it may be a, an intimidation, which is the first thing which design has to address, that may be the first um, pain point or, 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 or um, step in the journey. But, the, but these journey maps are really powerful, and, and at the end of the day, they're not rocket science. It's almost just putting yourselves in the shoes of the audience or even documenting them and just think about every single touch point or every single stage they need to go through in order to reach their objective. And each of those stages, just be th thinking, okay, what are they doing at the stage? What are they thinking and what are they feeling? And obviously from this, trying to identify strengths that you can enhance, but also those pain points that can actually provide opportunities and, and, and to improve the solution. And, and it tests a lot of assumptions. Like this, is, this is a 300 level student at university who's got, got mapped their own journey through and realizing there is more than just books as a eureka moment for the student. Uh, if you're in the, working in the library like, environment, you've made those, those assumptions are, uh, are really easy to make. And, and th these journey maps really test that, that there is a, a, a body of, of, of well-educated young people who don't realize what resources are available in the library. Mm. Um, so all touch points are considered. So we, we, we deal with lighting, space, materiality, textiles, um, digital touch points, the, the books themselves, the people who staff the library, um, so, and, and favor none. So the digital, the human, the physical, and time are all considered equal. Mm. So, so we don't, the, the, the media that isn't, isn't driving the, 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 the process, um, the, the journey is. So we, we, we have students who set out maybe with assumptions about what they're going to, to build and end up building something completely different. And, and I mean, from a visual communication perspective, this has been really fantastic for us because it really expands the designer's role from just uh, service provider to someone who can become a lot more strategic and also kind of moves a lot of the solutions away from just being a two-dimensional aesthetic driven thing to um, products, processes, services, events, all the way through to environments. So that's where that whole cross-disciplinary approach really does And it's a shitload out. of fun. This is, this, this is designing a library and they, they, someone asked the question, could you eat your lunch in the library? Um, and they tried it out. So this is, lunch was drawn on a bit of paper, this is a glass, um, and they're there, they're there um, prototyping, trying out, could you have a library environment where, which was comfortable enough that you'd want to eat your lunch? Um, so, so lots of rapid prototyping. Um, so the project, we, 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 we looked at two libraries, the Wellington City Library and the Massey University Library, the Wellington Campus Library, um, and we, we outlined three dif distinct challenges, which we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at in a, in a moment. Yeah, and it's great to have uh, Craig with us here today. He kind of helped out from Massey, Massey Library as well with kind of giving a lot of feedback and input into this project. In fact, when that, we've practiced what we, we preach in it and brought everyone in. So we had the Libraries Coalition come in, we had the Wellington City Library come in, um, uh, and more importantly, we took the students out into the, into the, the field. Um, so a lot of auto-ethnographic research took place. Um, why did we choose a library? We fucking love, we really love libraries. Um, we love them because they um, are changing so fast. So as sort of anti-experts, we, we just see so much potential in them. Um, and so much potential in that space. Uh, the fact that you, the, 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 these new technologies have come in, information is, is, is available everywhere, but the role the library does is, is, is a particularly a special one. And, and our students' response to it was quite amazing. There's this sort of latent love of that space. And there's almost this coming together of the town hall and, and the, the, the cafe and the village pub, all, all these sort of ethos and values coming together in the library. It was also interesting last You might gather, Tim and I, we really, really love our job. Um, so again, um, the methodology, so, so it's really eclectic. We, we again, e ethnography um, meets sociology, meets anthropology, meets um, an iterative design process, do fail, do fail, do fail. Um, and again, lots, lots, of, lots of testing. So um, a lot of people talk about the sort of rapid prototyping fail fast thing. This was, could it be a space of, the library be a space of play um, 
and the critique immediately was, well, what, I'm trying to get my essay done. I don't want you, you know, doing that next to me. So the, the answer that the students had was, well, let's play beside people learning. So they literally set up play beside a group of 400 level honours students who are busy studying um, to see what would happen. You can imagine the out result, but um, it was um, a, little, a little more successful than, um, than, than you, that you might yeah. presume. And, and I mean, other techniques are role playing, or um, you can also just go and shadow someone, not in a creepy way, but just kind of it observe. Can, it can be a bit yeah, creepy. It can be creepy. <laughs> uh, observe what people are doing, obviously questionnaires. I mean, it's not rocket, rocket science, it really is just trying to get, um, I suppose, inside the head of your users. And, and, and we are anti-experts, so, so we, we do, we do um, like this is um, qualitative research a la design school. So uh, let's put something up and ask the user what they, th they, they use this particular space for in a particular time. And then, um, I, mean, I mean, sometimes the methodology is a little bit flawed, like I know we got a, an email from Craig saying, oh, these are appearing all through the library, it doesn't say <laughs> who's put it up, what it's for, uh, there's no, no kind of, uh, I suppose, um, Ethics behind it. It was just <laughs> students going for it, and it was it was kind of like you're good, but you know you might just want to think this one through a bit. But we use that. We, we then teach them, you know, the methodological sophistication afterwards. So we use it as a, as a learning moment. Mm. But they do by the end of it know about projective techniques and qualitative surveys. Um, so the three three distinct challenges was if information is, is, is digitally available anytime, anywhere, what's the library's role in the community? Uh, second point is how else might the library become more relevant in its users' lives? Um, so what are the opportunities for the library environment? And finally, how can um, new users of an evolving like, space be introduced or reintroduced to, to, to the, this constantly evolving en environment? So a lot of our students are these reluctant re readers. They read, you know, read vivaciously as, as, as young people. Then once they had to do it for NCEA or university, they backed away from it. And then they forced to, in their senior years at university, sort of re-immerse themselves in it. It's sort of new again to them. But in those intervening years, the library itself has changed a lot. So the, the, the whole idea of um, bringing new users, and the university environment's great, because every year you've got a whole new card. Yeah, and, uh, and, and that third point specifically relates to the university environment. And we're really kind of surprised in our times that we'll uh, either bring in a, a book or have a film. And it's, well, when you bring in a book, the students just gather around and say, oh my gosh. It's amazing. Look at all these amazing resources. Where'd you get this from? You know, it's like, uh, you know, the library, just you know, down the hallway and down the stairs. And um, it's amazing how many of them don't really kind of utilise that, that resource. So, um, again, we're all going off to say insights and not solutions. Um, so, again, these are our observations of, of, of and what we're going to eventually get to our observations. Yeah, and, and, um, and this is how digitally sophisticated we are. We ask them to, you know, mock up a a Macintosh, you know, what would, it, what would it look like when they sit down? So they get cardboard and they make a Mac um, if one wasn't available. Mm. Um, but in terms of rapid prototyping, it works. It's enough to know whether if I sit down at this kiosk and it looks like this and I want to reach here, um, it's enough for them to move on to the next step. And, and I suppose like a, a little bit of a disclaimer, like some of the solutions, or not solutions, but some of the um, responses might be seen as being a little bit optimistic and, and possibly a little bit idealistic. and. Um, I think sometimes the students fail to appreciate maybe some of the limitations or complexities involved, and, and even some of these responses might be things that libraries have actually tr tried, and perhaps they've failed for one reason or the other. But I think at the end of the day, it does actually give you an insight to, um, I suppose, what people of this age expect and, and want. Yeah. So, um, so some themes from the responses. So we saw a hell of a lot of um, students focus on search, so seeing a an opportunity in search, not on the sort of the engine algorithmic side, but in terms of that the touch point where, where the where the user interface yeah. faces with it, um, that how it looks, how it feels, and what's on there is it was there were some really um, key themes running through and, that. And all the responses really came from some of the core needs they found with the audience. And and say for example with this one here, what they found was that um, when they started investigating and researching the library, that they were really kind of surprised at, at all the resources that the libraries had that they weren't aware of, and so. They started thinking, okay, how can we make these resources more, more visible and more accessible? Other students kind of sometimes found it really hard to access the information they want, but more surprisingly, sometimes they didn't even know what information they wanted, and uh, they were almost kind of just flying blind. So a lot of these responses were trying to think how you could um, 
how you could respond to that. So it, it's doing things like uh, whether it's sharing or the ability to follow or the ability for a, uh, a search engine to, I suppose, have a memory of things that you've searched or books you've taken out and possibly recommend things based on, mm. based on that. So um, technology was, 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 was everywhere, but it sort of it, it led to a very traditional, or led through a traditional um, place and process to a, uh, the book was still the hero um, in a lot of these, these search functions. Um, uh, but augmented, so RFID was just expected. It was this amazing expectation that every book will have an RFID near field you know, tag on it, which will be able to talk to their smart device, which will be their third eye as they navigate the system. Um, and they should be able to just hold up a, you know, a tablet or a, a device to a, to a bookshelf and help navigate it. And the reason for that is quite interesting. It's not so much that um, the technology itself made it, you know, uh, facilitate a faster or more effortless transaction. It was that if I want to design, if I want to look at um, bicycle lane design, um, is this engineering, is it design, is it civics, is it like, like the Dewey Decimal System the way that the books of information is shelved currently doesn't work for them, and it doesn't, it doesn't work for, 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 for how they work. Um, for example, the, the Master of Design and Master of Fine Arts thesis are almost impossible to shell. Is this art, is it design, is it civics? It, it's quite intriguing. This, uh, the second point that what kind of sandpit they played and really came from when students really started to investigate what a library was, you know, they, they realised it was more than just books, and this really taps into that emotive quality. So, they really started working, using words like it's a sanctuary or it's a, it's a community hub. So they started thinking about the ways that it can actually kind of facilitate um, those coming together, coming together of people, but also broaden uh, the library's reach kind of beyond, beyond its footprint to some extent. Which is great fun. Like, 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 so search leads to, so this was a search, a hypothetical search for On the Road by Jack Kerouac. Um, and it would lead to a visit to a, a show, a street kind of named Desire down, down the road to a particular um, band that's playing a gig, as well as to sound, book, you know, um, uh, film resources. So, so, so the, the, the library was sort of a hub of, of, of events all around. So a search for India might lead you to an Indian restaurant or a Diwali celebration. Yeah, and, and also, you know, this, if we go back to that, uh, that journey map, a lot of these ideas were also evolving things that the library were doing well. So this was kind of trying to enhance things such as you know, law for lunch presentations or, or story time. So events that go on in, in the library, was, how can you actually accentuate some of those mm. approaches? Um, so so peer-to-peer -peer and collaborative learning was, was massive and it was probably our, our most su surprising um, e examples. They wanted as much to, 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 to learn from each other within the library, so the library is a facilitating or a, a, a collaborative space to learn from each other as to learn or be guided with, by the librarian or to find the knowledge or information within, within books. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a really cool little example where uh, when you apply for a library card or refresh your, your, your profile in, 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 on the, the library's database, you can uh, input what you have expertise in. And, so, and you can kind of gauge how much expertise you think you have in those areas. So this person knows quite a bit about horses and postmodernism. Um, but what that means if someone's searching uh, horses or postmodernism, um, just uh, equal to audio books, is, is that people might um, pop up. So the answer might be a book on postmodernism or it might be Kate Baxter. But of course, then we challenge this and this gets user tested. And of course, Kate might want to be writing an essay and be on a deadline, might not want to talk to you. Or she might be really bored and a little bit lonely on campus. She lives away from Whakatane somewhere, she's away from home, and she'd actually have to love, it, love a chat about horses or postmodernism. So when she enters the library, she's welcomed in and she can choose whether or not she wants to be social or, 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 or otherwise. And if someone you know, uh, requests a, ch a, a, a chat, so this is in the university environment, if someone wants to chat with Kate, she can choose whether or not um, she accepts that conversation. Hmm. So really interesting that I can, might, might enter expecting a book and end up with a chat with Kate. Hmm. Um, so this is a, a nice little video exemplar of um, all those ideas sort of coming together in a journey map. So this is sort of like a, a, a final presentation of the, the students' work. So you just Channel your positive energy. Let's just hope it works. It'll work. Kate is a first year design student at Massey University. She has been given her very first assignment where she has to write an essay on postmodernism. 
Paige is Question. reluctant to use the library as she is unsure of what the library has to offer. In order to best connect and engage with the library resources, Paige would benefit from understanding her own learning style. Once she knows this, she can begin to utilise the library to its full potential and best facilitate her learning. Paige is prompted with 10 non-library related questions. The majority of her answers turn out dark blue, which means she is mostly a visual learner. Now that she is aware of her learning style, she can begin to use the library more effectively. The Learning Hub can filter results based on different learning styles to help her connect with the resources and become more engaged in the library. The catalogue is split into four learning styles and because Paige is locked in, the visual column is the most dominant of the four. My Shelves is a personalised area that allows Paige to add shelves based on the papers she's currently working on. The shelves are a place for her and her classmates to bookmark and share resources that they find useful. Going back to her search, it seems quite broad, so she finds the filter function to help her narrow it down. Visual resources that relate to her search appear, including a book called Meg's History of Graphic Design. It looks really useful for her and perhaps some other classmates. She decides to bookmark it to the shelf. The catalogue also provides learning resources that exist outside of Macy. Being new to Wellington, this also connects Paige to her new surroundings. After seeing the exhibition, Paige wants to give it a review, so she adds a star to it. The star works as a rating system in order to filter the resources. The most popular and useful peer-reviewed resources will always appear at the top. How much time are we running out of time, are we? Uh, we just came out for 25 minutes now. Okay, shivers. <laughs> okay, really quickly. So, our... <laughs> The main bit. <laughs> the main bit. Analysis over the, la over the last um, three years. Focus on individu individualizing the user experience. So the students really saw themselves as drinking from the fire hose of information. So, so much information. Um, they, they, really, they really needed something to curate and calm and, 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 and um, sort of customize that, that flow of, of um, information. Um, expectation, expectation, all communication is dialogue. They wanted to talk with the library. They wanted everything to be in conversation both between themselves and the library and the librarians and also with the, within each other as peers. Um, expectation on uh, the, 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 the uh, experiences <laughs> sustained beyond the library uh, and that the library experience um, is sustaining. So if they start off as a new user, that as, as they develop their, their needs and expectations, the library's experience changes with them. Library role as social facilitator. Uh, it is a, it, as a collaborative sort of hub of learning, as much of a as a, a supply of, of knowledge and information, um, which kind of changes the role of the librarian as well as the library as a space. Um, Favouring the familiar, things things which you look like the things they use. So uh, interfaces which look like Pinterest, Google, Facebook, things which don't look like those sort of modernist monolithic you know, search engines that, that they often encounter. And also, also act like those, uh, yeah. of, uh, those functionalities they're, they're used to. So they, they wanted library search engines to look like everything else they used. Um, and finally, um, no experience was proposed without a digital element and no digital only experience was proposed, which we thought was really, really interesting. Not one student, over, over 200 students thought the library is dead as a physical space, take it all online, which, which we expected, not what one did. But no one, um, no one thought that the physical space could be um, sustained without being augmented by digital. So that was our final touch point. Thanks very much. Cheers.